Hi, I'm Doug Klein with Database by Doug. We're going to look at indexing. This is a simple introduction. Uh, it's kind of the example that's in every book, but I think sometimes the books focus on the wrong thing when, when they're teaching this material. So I've cooked up a database, and in that database I have a very large table called the person table. And this is going to take a while to come back, so I'm just going to let it spin through this. So there we go. It took about a minute for that to come back. I have roughly 1.3 million rows in uh, this table. And just to see how I've cooked this table up, I've got some standard fields in there of different sizes. And I've uh, cooked some bogus data in there also just to take up space. And uh, it just has a, an index on the ID. That's the primary key. So what we're going to be looking at today is disk I.O. And the reason we are going to do that is just uh, some numbers I looked up on the internet today. Uh, roughly a decent 7200 spinning disk has a disk seek time of 6.43 milliseconds. So that's the time to find a particular set of data, or a sector, or a page. Um, and uh, RAM seek time is 14 nanoseconds. Again, that's just, uh, was it a DDR4, something like that. And um, just to do the rough math here, notice that this is milliseconds and this is nanoseconds. So pretty much RAM is three orders of magnitude faster than a spinning disk. So when I did the math here, it came out to roughly 500. I always just say about a thousand times faster and of course it depends on your specific setup. So uh, RAM is much faster, uh, you know, three orders of magnitude faster, and uh, but it has the, the downside that it's more expensive and it's volatile. In other words, uh, when the power goes out, everything in RAM goes away. So if we really want something to be persistent, we should have it on a uh, non-volatile hard drive. Now, databases are built to leverage this difference. Uh, if, we, if there wasn't a difference, uh, we'd get much less performance out of a database engine. So databases are built to use RAM and disk, each for what it's best at. So to look at it in more detail, what's going on, I'm going to set the statistics I.O. on for SQL Server. And what that's going to let me do is look at the I.O involved in each query. And I'll go ahead and run this and let it spin. So we see again that this took roughly a minute to come back. I got my 1.3 million rows. But what I also get in the messages is this, and this is what the statistics do for me, is I see uh, reads uh, that have, uh, and these are page reads that the database had to do to satisfy this query. The ones, um, I would say the other thing about this is these are page reads. And the reason we're concerned about pages is that pages are the amount of data that move back and forth between RAM. So when the database engine goes and needs some data, it goes to disk for it, it will read it 8 kilobytes at a time. So regardless of whether you need only one byte off of a page, it'll get the entire page. So all of these are logical page reads and physical page reads. Now, these are the two that I mainly look at at a high level. Um, what this means is a physical read was the database could not find what it needed in RAM, so it had to physically go to disk. This means that the database was going to go to disk, but it found what it needed in RAM, which was faster, so it used the version that was in RAM. So um, in this case, what it means when I have zero physical reads is that my entire table is in RAM, and I didn't have to go to disk at all. This is not necessarily realistic for a real database. So since RAM is expensive, 
and uh, volatile, typically most of your data is going to be on a disk. So I might have 10 terabytes of data on a disk and maybe 16 gigabytes of RAM and so I can't get every bit of the data in RAM. So I always think of these logical reads as gifts. Uh, now you can influence this somewhat and what you, you'd like to do is um, try to make sure that you are getting some off of disk. It is a problem if I'm getting everything off of the hard drive um, but really when I look at performance I look at the total page reads uh, the logical and physical because just because it was logical right now it doesn't mean it won't be physical the next time I run it. So the best thing to do is really just overall reduce the combination of logical and physical or what I just call page or IOs. So um, let's say I did the same thing so but instead of getting the entire table back I'm just gonna get the first name of the table back and we'll look at how how quickly that comes back and notice this takes about six seconds and rather than taking a minute it's a tenth of the time and when I look at the messages however I basically get the same IOs so what the database has to do in order to get the data is exactly the same but it came back 10 times faster why well because of the network the slowest thing in that case was the network instead of having to push uh, the entire record across you know or 1.3 million records across the network it only had to push 1.3 million first names across the network so you can see that the work the database is doing is the same um, but in that case we're getting uh, faster uh, network. So let's say I do something like this where I get the entire record but I limit it to only a single um, single record and I limit it by the ID. So in this case it, it came back almost instantly zero seconds here and when I look at the messages I get three logical reads. Now uh, what about something like this where I limit it not based on the ID I limit it based on a last name so again it comes back very very quickly I'm gonna look at the, the logical reads and notice that I did the same work at the database level as I did when I got every record you know the, when I did the select star of all records so again the reason it's coming back fast is because not much data is coming back. I have 130 uh, full rows instead of 1.3 million rows and it came back essentially instantly. So that uh, entire minute to get every row is really entirely due to the network. So some of this disk and uh, it, it's hard to tell um, where the performance is and so the statistics IO is where you might find uh, some performance gains. So what's special about ID and why does this select star generate three page IOs and this generates 138,000? Well the reason is that there's an index on the ID Right, so, um, so by definition, when you first create a table and you set a primary key on it, there's an index that is set on that primary key. That index helps immensely on lookups for things by ID. So whenever I have a where ID equals or where the primary key equals something, it's going to be extremely fast. But what if I want to speed this up in terms of I.O.? Right, so I have 138,000 IOs. So how would I kind of fix that? Well, um, I have this very simple index, create non-clustered index. I'm calling it ix underscore last name on the person table and just include the last name field. So I'm creating an index that is specifically on the last name. So I'll go ahead and run that and it'll take just a little bit to create that. 
uh, it's actually setting aside some disk space and is creating a uh, auxiliary data structure to help. So now I'm going to do the same query on last name. It comes back almost instantly, just like it did last time. But when I look at the IOs, I get 393 versus 138,000. Now you might be saying, well, they both come back uh, in zero seconds. Well, think about this on a dynamic database where these queries are happening a hundred times a second or a thousand times a second. If you can take each one of those and improve the speed by a thousand times, it'll have a, an overall effect of, on the load of the server. So what I've just shown you is this perfect scenario for an index. I'm looking people up by last name and I'm going to create an index that helps with that query. This is pretty much what's covered in all the database books, but uh, and it's really the perfect use case. Um, it shows all the upsides of an index. However, there are significant downsides, particularly regarding inserts, updates, and deletes. Uh, those indexes need to be maintained, so we'll investigate that in detail in some future videos. The other thing I don't like in a lot of the education uh, for indexes is they tend to focus on the data structure performance and um, although that's really good for algorithmic uh, efficiency and evaluating computational efficiency in database the real benefit is reduction in disk IO so when I evaluate uh, these things and, and throughout this video I didn't look at the CPU performance of these and I was exclusively looking at the disk or the page IOs of these. So why, why am I not looking at CPU? Well, CPU is a thousand times, give or take, faster than RAM. So in general, when you look at performance at a database, um, you worry about performance in this order be entirely because of the speed differences. First, you look at the network uh, because it's a thousand times slower than the disk. Uh, so you do network, then disk. Why do you look at disk second? Because it's a thousand times slower than RAM. Why do you look at RAM next? Because it's a thousand slower or times slower than CPU. Now, if you've tuned your network, then you can focus on disk, or how should I say, network usage. If you've tuned the disk usage, then you can look at perhaps RAM usage. If you've tuned your RAM usage, you might look at CPU. Um, and it's just the biggest bang for your buck is in this order. So I'm going to do some other videos on indexing. This is a big complex topic and uh, very interesting once you get past the introductory uh, you know, database uh, material. Uh, but we'll look at some other examples in the future. Thanks for watching.